Welcome to section two of this course on international human rights and we will, we will study today um, the notion of uh, jurisdiction. Uh, we will ask uh, to which situations human rights apply, when may they be invoked uh, against uh, the state. Um, the question of jurisdiction has gained in importance in recent years as a result of globalization as a result also of uh, more and more states taking part in military actions outside their their national territory um, and as a result of states cooperating with each other um, in creating situations that may lead to to human rights violations being committed and the question uh, arises on in such circumstances um, whether a state may be held responsible for an alleged human rights violation despite the situation complained of having arisen outside the national territory of the state concerned. Um, most human rights treaties contain a reference to the fact that the human rights that they guarantee, that they enunciate, are protected from violation um, in situations that are under the jurisdiction of the state or under the power or competence of the state concerned. And the question arises whether uh, human rights may therefore be invoked also when states operate outside their national territory. Let me, let me give maybe a, a, one example, which is a, a famous early example of this question arising in the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. The case was Loizidu against Turkey. Uh, Turkey had invaded um, uh, the northern part of the island of Cyprus in 1974 and Mrs. Loizidu uh, sought to have access to her house, which was located on the part of the island that was under the control of the Turkish uh, um, troops. Um, although Turkey had established in that part of the island um, a, a sort of local administration called the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, really the Turkish military um, were in control of that part of the island. And Mrs. Loisidu complained that she was unable to have access to her property and, and um, uh, alleged that this was in violation of um, uh, Article 1 of the first traditional protocol to the Convention that protects the right to, to property. And um, the court was, was asked whether the duties of Turkey under the European Convention on Human Rights extended to that situation. It adopted two judgments, one on preliminary objections of Turkey uh, alleging that uh, uh, it was not, um, it had no jurisdiction on that issue, um, and, and the other judgment was on the merit, merits of the case uh, adopted on um, 18th of December 1996. And in the first of the two judgments, one, of, one adopted on 23rd of March 1995, um, the European Court of Human Rights says very clearly that because Turkey occupies effectively the northern part of the island of Cyprus, it is bound to comply with the requirements of the European Convention on Human Rights. It would not be acceptable for a state, simply because it occupies foreign territory, to be able to ignore the human rights instruments that it has ratified. And the, the court um, uh, says the following in a very, um, I believe, telling um, uh, expression. It says that bearing in mind the object and purpose of the Convention, the responsibility of a contracting party may also arise when as a consequence of military action, whether lawful or unlawful, it exercises effective control in an area um, outside its national territory. The obligation to secure, says the court, in such an area, the rights and freedoms set out in the Convention derives from the fact of such control whether it is, it is exercised directly uh, through the armed forces of the state concerned or through a subordinate local administration. And so that was a, a landmark judgment uh, in which uh, very clearly the European Court of Human Rights uh, uh, decided that um, the applicability of the Convention, its invocability by, by individuals aggrieved, um, alleging to, to be victims of violations of the Convention, could be invoked also outside the national territory of the state of the state concerned. This reading of what human rights instruments require was to a large extent vindicated at the highest level by the International Court of Justice in its advisory opinion adopted on 9th of July 2004 
um, when the International Court of Justice answered a question of the General Assembly of the United Nations um, on the legal consequences of the construction of a wall in the occupied Palestinian territory. And this very important advisory opinion uh, was one in which the International Court of Justice considered that Israel, because of it uh, building a wall that um, uh, was in part erected on the occupied Palestinian territory, um, was in violation of a number of rights of the Palestinian people um, and um, including violations of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights and the Convention um, of the Rights of the Child. Um, and so the International Court of Justice confirmed this idea that human rights instruments also oblige states outside what is their national territory when they are in effective control of a situation located outside that territory. The question of course arises um, um, to, to, to how far does this go um, and, and to which extent does this mean that a state may be held responsible for whichever consequences its actions may have outside the national territory even in the absence of territorial occupation as in situations of military occupation. Uh, for example, the Human Rights Committee in, in 1981 uh, decided um, on a communication uh, filed by the family of uh, Sergio Lopez Burgos against the state of Uruguay. Now, in the mid 1970s, uh, Lopez Burgos was a trade unionist, um, an activist uh, in, in, in Uruguay that was uh, at the time um, uh, dominated by a, by a military, um, uh, right wing military junta. And he was arrested, he was uh, harassed, he finally fled the country and he was uh, uh, granted the status of refugee in Argentina. Um, however, the Uruguayan secret services, uh, cooperating with the Argentinian parliamentary fo paramilitary forces, arrested um, Lopez Burgos, detained Lopez Burgos in the outskirts of Buenos Aires for a couple of weeks before uh, uh, bringing Lopez Burgos back to Uruguay where he was uh, uh, facing further ill-treatment and, and torture. And the question that the Human Rights Committee under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights had to address was um, could the responsibility of Uruguay be engaged for a kidnapping, an illegal detention, an arbitrary detention that took place on Argentinian territory um, when he was detained by the Uruguayan secret uh, services in the outskirts of, of Buenos Aires. And the Human Rights Committee answered in the affirmative, considering that the responsibility of Uruguay extended to such situations. A country, the Human Rights Committee implied, should not be allowed to do outside its territory what it is um, disallowed from doing within the national territory. Um, but of course, um, one wonders how far this goes and whether this means that the notion or the condition of jurisdiction, competence or control is um, autonomous um, or whether it is simply one way of saying that the state is responsible for any situation that can be imputed to that state. In other terms, is the condition of jurisdiction, the condition of competence, a condition that is distinct from um, the condition of attribution uh, that is a condition for international responsibility to be to be affirmed. So uh, that is uh, uh, one of the questions that arise when we study this notion of jurisdiction. There is another question that arises that we will also study in this uh, section of the course, which is whether states may be held responsible for human rights violations, even though the situation complained of, the violation that is alleged to have taken place, has occurred on their territory, but in a part of the territory over which they cannot exercise effective control. For example, after the Turkish troops invaded the northern part of Cyprus in 1974, would Cyprus still be responsible for human rights violations committed on that part of the territory that is occupied by Turkish forces and over which uh, the Cypriot government uh, really cannot um, exercise any effective control? Um, uh, that is a situation that also occurs sometimes. Uh, for example, 
um, when there is a guerrilla movement that is active on part of the territory, when there is a separatist regime that claims um, uh, sovereign rights over part of the national territory, may the state, which is still nominally um, the territorially competent state, be held responsible for human rights violations that occur in such circumstances on such parts of the territory that it cannot effectively control. So these are the questions we will study here in this section of the course, and I, I propose that you now turn to the next, uh, the next uh, developments within this section.